Tonight, Putnam County is scrambling to collect hundreds of thousands of dollars in property taxes. It comes after a News Channel 5 investigation, <coughs> excuse me, revealed the county property assessor left large properties off the tax rolls. Investigative reporter Ben Hall started asking questions, and now the state has begun its own investigation. Well, that's right. Putnam County just raised property taxes for everyone. But our investigation raises questions about whether the property assessor gave one wealthy landowner a sweetheart deal. Ms. Chafin, hi. She's been Putnam County's property assessor since 1999. We need to talk to you about this. Are you helping people pay less in property taxes? No, that is not even a possibility. Rhonda Chaffin just lost re-election, but is standing by the work she's done. But our investigation discovered her office left large apartment complexes like this one off the tax rolls. In 2010, the owner of this $4.5 million apartment complex was charged only $515 in property taxes. It's very deliberate what has happened as far as these 18 buildings being deleted from the tax roll. Ellen White worked in the property assessor's office for five years, but says she was recently fired after voicing concerns over how it was run. The buildings she's talking about are part of the Gainsborough Grade apartment complex owned by Charles Sword. Records show it was finished years ago. This reflects that in 2008 in September, the apartments were completed and were being occupied. Despite that, in 2009 and 2010, the multi-million dollar apartment complex was not on the tax roll. The county only taxed Sword for the value of the land. The county finally billed Sword for the apartments in 2011. It paid more than $46,000. The apartments just disappeared? Yes. From what this is showing for 2009, they were taken off of the tax roll. How are entire apartment complexes not on the tax roll? One problem we had. Chaffin says it was an honest mistake. After we began asking questions, she personally got a $39,000 check from Charles Sword for tax year 2010 and gave it to the county. For 2009, he is still paid for just land. We've made a mistake. We've made up for it. He paid the taxes. It's done. But records show the apartments were back off the tax rolls this year, something Chaffin denies. They were put back on the rolls after we started asking questions. And we found even more examples. I moved in January 2011. January 2011. Yeah. Joshua Clapp moved into this sword apartment building on Hillham Road a year and a half ago. His neighbor, Lauren Dixon, moved in the year before. When did you move in here? Um, it was August in 2010. Chaffin's office has never billed sword for those apartments, which the state valued at three and a half million dollars. Sword paid just over $300 in 2010 and 11 for the value of the land. What explanation could there possibly be for this? I have none. You know, there, there, to me, there's no explanation as to how they were just taken off the tax roll. White supervised employees that visited the Hillham Road complex in March of 2011 and listed it as occupied. What about Hillham Road? Hillham Road, you think it was done one year, I think it was done another year. Chaffin says it wasn't on the tax rolls in 2011 because it wasn't finished. The county codes listed all the buildings in the complex finished by late 2010 and issued its final order of occupancy in November of 2010. There were police reports. The police went out there in 2010. But it, it the whole complex wasn't finished. According There's to building and codes, it build, was. All 18 buildings. All 18 buildings. I have a hard time believing that. Kids feel like we're neglected in some ways. The county needs the money. High school students are now crammed into classrooms at an elementary school because the high school was deemed a fire hazard. White says apartments don't just vanish from the tax rolls. If you were to ask me, did you or did any of your field staff do this, I will tell you absolutely not. So then how did it happen? Someone had to do it. Hello. Minutes after we caught up with Chaffin, her attorney called. Well, I'm standing in the courthouse yard with News Channel 5 in my place. Okay. She quickly ended the interview, leaving questions about other properties unanswered. We need to sit down and ask you these questions. Some of the wealthiest people in one Middle Tennessee county can expect some bad news in the mail. One day after a New Channel 5 investigation, the state is notifying them they owe years worth of unpaid property taxes. 
investigative reporter Ben Hall first reported that property assessor Rhonda Chapin's office left large apartment buildings off the tax rolls. And tonight he has the results of a state review. Well, that's right. Chafin's office undervalued properties by more than $82 million, according to a state report, raising more questions about how she did her job. And how our entire apartment complex is not on the tax roll. One problem we had. That's what property assessor Rhonda Chaffin said last week. But now a state review has found not one, but nearly 200 properties that her office undervalued. Two million dollars on one property? That's bad. County Executive Kim Blaylock seemed stunned when we showed her some of the numbers. Among them, four separate properties Chaffin's office undervalued by more than a million dollars in a single year. If that's what's happened, then it needs to be corrected and not happen, happen anymore. The state says Chaffin's office wrongly reduced the value of the Chelsea apartments owned by Shirley Gall by nearly two and a half million dollars a year, dating back to 2009. The county is about to send Gaw a notice that he owes more than $81,000 in taxes for the last three years, plus an additional $23,000 in late fees. Our investigation discovered that Chafin depreciated some buildings in the complex by as much as 70%. In one case, a building that cost nearly $600,000 new was taxed as if the value was $101,000. There are buildings there that were depreciated out 60 to 70 percent. Have you lived in one of them? No. Okay. But they're rented. They probably are, but not for no high rent. Oh, it's wonderful shape. They keep it in tip top shape. Leland Guzman says he's lived in the apartments 12 years, and they're well maintained. This is the number one place in Cookville to live. Two names dominate the list of properties Chaffin's office undervalued. Members of the politically well-connected Gaw family own 100 of the properties. Landlord Charles Sword owns 75 of the properties. The largest single undervalued property belongs to Gary McNabb, who is listed as a board member for Lottery Tennessee. Chaffin undervalued his apartment complex by more than $3 million in 2011 alone. Last week, she insisted she had done nothing wrong. Some of these properties look like they've been depreciated out an enormous amount. In your opinion. But you're saying so there's nothing wrong with any of the depreciation? No. The property owners have 60 days to appeal these reappraisals. This could generate a million dollars in new revenue for Putnam County. All right, Ben, no one is saying that the property owners did anything wrong. Well, that is exactly right. They just paid the bill that was put before them. The question is, why did the assessor undervalue the properties by so much? Putnam County's former property assessor faces new questions tonight. A News Channel 5 investigation first revealed she lowered the property values for a handful of prominent property owners. And now we've learned she bought her home from one of those property owners. Investigative reporter Ben Hall looks into what some call a conflict of interest. Well, that's right. Rhonda Chaffin had help buying her home, and it came from a developer who paid less in taxes because of her appraisals. They would have done it with anybody. Former property assessor Rhonda Chaffin saw nothing wrong with accepting help from a local developer when she bought her home. They helped me for a few months until I got my house sold and got my loan. Chaffin bought this home in 2007 from Mr. Shirley Gaw for $150,000. But Gaw isn't just a developer, he's also a political supporter who signed this nominating petition to get Chaffin on the ballot. You have a relationship with him. You bought your house from the Gauze. So did everybody in my subdivision. But when the sale of Chaffin's original house fell through, Shirley Gaw agreed to help. So they gave you a loan until you sold your house? Yes. And what was the interest rate on the loan? I don't know. That was in 2006. Six and a half percent, five and a half percent something. I don't know. Property records show Chaffin borrowed $85,000 from Gaw. But Chaffin's attorney claims Gaw didn't loan any money. He just held the deed of trust until Chaffin was able to pay off the home, which she did two years later. Her attorney says she used money from the sale of her first house as a down payment and later paid back Gaw using money she inherited. But he was not willing to provide any documentation to support those claims. Our investigation showed Shirley Gaw was one of a handful of wealthy property owners whose properties were undervalued by Chaffin's office. 
State auditors found she undervalued nine of Shirley Gaw's properties by nine and a half million dollars over three years. They include Chelsea Place Apartments, which auditors say Chaffin undervalued by nearly two and a half million dollars each year since 2009. And Shirley Gaw's 7,000 square foot home, undervalued by more than $38,000 a year, according to the state. This woman had extraordinary power in determining how much taxes these landowners pay. Tax watchdog Ben Cunningham says the fact that Chaffin got help buying her home from someone the state claims got breaks on his property tax appraisals just doesn't smell right. We need to sit down and ask her these questions. It stinks to high heaven. I mean, it, it absolutely stinks to high heaven. Investigative reporter Ben Hall first broke this story, and you found the state had concerns about the Putnam County's assessor's office years ago. Well, that's right, Vicki. This state audit raised concerns about the office years ago. Now the newly elected assessor is dealing with a mess. Well, I'm standing in the courthouse yard with News Channel 5 in my face. Our investigation raised questions last month about how outgoing Putnam County property assessor Rhonda Chaffin valued the properties of wealthy landowners. You're depreciating out their property by, We're not by 60 to 70 percent in some cases. No, no. We're looking for a total value at the end. But the state found Chaffin undervalued properties by more than $82 million. So there's nothing wrong with any of the depreciation? No. There is nothing wrong with any of them. But the state disagrees. The comptroller claims Chaffin used excessive depreciation to reduce the values of some 200 properties. Now News Channel 5 investigates has learned this is not the first time the state has questioned Chaffin. Back in 2003, state auditors warned Chaffin that she had possibly broken the law by changing the value of more than 900 properties on the 2001 tax rolls. In this scathing audit, the state says many of those changes appear to be against the law. Chaffin defended what she did, but the state said she should only make changes to the tax rolls involving clerical mistakes, and she should not use her judgment to change the value of property. It said those types of changes should only be done by the five-person County Board of Equalization. News Channel 5 Investigates has learned the FBI is taking an interest in former Putnam County property assessor Rhonda Chaffin. At least one employee who worked in Chafin's office confirms being interviewed by federal agents. Our investigation first revealed that Chafin's office undervalued properties of wealthy citizens. Investigative reporter Ben Hall first broke the story. We know the FBI is involved in this case, but we're not sure if it's a preliminary or formal investigation. Meanwhile, more properties appear undervalued. More troubles tonight for the elected official at the center of a News Channel 5 investigation. Investigative reporter Ben Hall first raised questions about how Putnam County's former property assessor appraised the properties of some of the county's wealthiest citizens. He's in our newsroom with what we've learned. We have just confirmed agents with the FBI and IRS served a search warrant on Rhonda Chaffin's home in Cookville yesterday. Our investigation first revealed that Chaffin's office depreciated several apartment complexes and private homes by large amounts. Admit the owners paid less in property taxes. After our stories, the state comptroller determined that her office undervalued nearly 200 properties by more than $80 million. This fall, the state notified those property owners that they owe back taxes. Almost all of them have appealed. Chaffin was property assessor for more than 12 years before losing re-election in August. Chaffin and her attorney did not return our calls, but told their local paper agents removed computers, a zip drive, and receipts from Chaffin's home. Ben Hall, News Channel 5, investigates. Rhonda Chaffin has maintained she did nothing wrong, and you can see our entire investigation by going to newschannel5.com.